Well, hello, hello everyone. Welcome to my channel. I'm Lorena, Lorena Creel. Retro Nerd Girl is here Hi. with me. And of course, her will pop in uh, towards the latter, latter end so you can get her impressions of this episode known as The Convert. So this is the third episode that uh, we have for season three of The Mandalorian. So basically where we catch up, if you remember from last episode, um, Mando almost got ate by uh, <laughs> really, what was it, the Mythosaur or something? Yeah, the Mythosaur. Or something like that. Yep. Yeah, so he he basically went into the waters of Lake Minnetonka. He's now redeemed and <laughs> Bo-Katan witnessed it, but uh, something kind of weird uh, under the water. So that was where they left us last time. So yeah. now, uh, let's see, he's back out of the water and it's like, so what's next for these, for these two? Yeah, and I like the, it, it was so funny because... Um, I was thinking to myself uh, last week, I was like, I wonder if she's going to, you know, technically she's, uh, she was in the waters. I wonder if she's going to take off her helmet. And all through the last episode, she's been taking off her helmet every time they stop doing something. Mm -hmm. And then I noticed she still has her helmet on. Still has her helmet on, and I was like, "Hmm." <laughs> and she's, I, I think, when she's sitting down here, she's processing. I don't know if she's processing if she actually saw the thing mm -hmm. down there, like because if you see something that's weird like that, uh, you might be questioning whether you saw something or not. So it's it's funny that she asked him, like, "Did you see anything down there? Did you see anything alive?" Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, it could be taken many ways. Like either she doesn't believe it herself or she's just keeping, uh, keeping that a secret for herself. Like, okay, I, I know what I saw and, uh, let's see if he knows if he saw it too. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I'll, I'll have that extra, you know, something on, uh, uh, extra to know, uh, you know, uh, uh, on my own i'll i'll be the one to uh to have that knowledge so uh i'm kind of i don't trust her at this point I, I agree i don't really i don't really trust her either yeah so we're kind of like figuring out what her motives are although i do like this version of bo-katan more so than the you know the one just languishing around like uh everything <laughs> sucks <laughs> yeah this yeah, one, she's more. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was gonna probably say the same thing you were gonna say. Yeah, this one, she's more like what we expect. Um, yeah. We expect Bo Katan, you know, to uh, to be. So let's see. So the chorus, they finally leave. You know, leave oh, that no. and oh, I love him. <laughs> Little <too>. scamp. <laughs> Little. Scamp. Gamp, I know some people want to like roast him, but too bad he's too freaking oh, he's cute. Oh, so adorable! Yeah, he's so, <laughs> he's so cute with little his little pram, and he's like, "We got more people with us." Yeah, <laughs> Grogu babbling. Yes, he was trying to talk. He was trying to say something, and um, I'm not sure if he. Some people have speculated that he was trying to. Uh, warn them something was happening and some mm -hmm. other people have said that maybe he was uh, warning uh, Din that that she was acting weird. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Because she was kind of, I don't know, it was kind I couldn't put my finger on it with uh with her, but it, it's it's kind of like uh, keep an eye on this chick. Yeah, yeah. She, she I mean when you start keeping secrets, like even if she had said in in jest, like, "Oh, I thought I saw something down there," I'd have mm -hmm. been like, "Okay, she's the real one." But like because she didn't say that, she is like, "Huh? Is she just testing to see if he saw it too, so she can have the secret all to herself?" Mm -hmm. Um, or is she she just doesn't believe she saw it? You know, it, there's a there. Uh, I'm still, you know, 
keep her at arm's length, you know. <laughs> yeah, keep one eye open around around uh, around this chick. <laughs> Oh, but I did love seeing the TIE fighters again. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They came in hot. Um, anyway. yeah. <laughs> it was just great, yeah. like hearing the sound effects that you, you know, that you associate with the, with the TIE fighters. Yeah. This whole scene was really action packed and, um, you know, full of, full of action. What this actually over i would say superseded my expectation for this episode it was really excellent um and the tie fighters were they just like waiting for them because it, it was like they were they 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 must have been just waiting for them to show up because it seems the like timing, they were yeah, the yeah. timing was kind of sketchy to me. Uh, <laughs> we don't trust bo -Katan, We don't trust the TIE Fighters. <laughs> we don't trust that she led them there or what. But I was just like, wait, wait, TIE Fighters? Yeah. Why, are, why are there TIE Fighters showing up here? Exactly. Yeah. And isn't isn't the Empire supposed to be gone now you got these TIE this Fighters? What? Yeah, so that's what's been kind of the big question is... Is there someone out there like maybe Admiral Thrawn who is, um, t you know, giving orders uh, mm, to these TIE fighters? Mm -hmm. Or is it possibly, um, what's his name again? I, I keep forgetting his name. Gideon. Uh, Not Gideon. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. that he, um, uh, we find out later that he's, um, uh, something happened to him. But uh, maybe he's giving the orders to uh, launch this attack. Or it could be a completely new character, third-party character um, that is um, in the uh, re remnants of the old empire. And so mm. it, it's very, um, I, I like the fact that we don't know just yet. Uh, we need answers soon, but I like the fact that we don't know yet at this point. Um, excellent uh, dog fight here. It's oh, really, yeah. Really this awesome. Great. Um, uh, it, some of the best uh work in the series so far um you know as far as action goes and um uh space you know sh space vehicles and flying tactical um flying just mm -hmm. great stuff some people were comparing it to t top gun <laughs> it did have that feel with the you know with the perspective where it feels like you're in the cockpit you know Mm -hmm. in the tie fire cockpit and yeah with the shots i think it's because there's so many improvements in um in cgi and oh. rendering these space battles that i was just blown away by by the way that it looked and it was great watching this particular oh, uh, like this particular dog fight i had to go yeah. back and rewind it because it was that yeah. good and i just wanted to experience it again I saw it twice as well. It was really entertaining. Really entertaining. So, yeah, lots of ships got bloated up. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah, was I great mean, to see. They work so well as a team, uh, Bo Katan and, and Jaren. They are so good together. And, um, I, I just, I think that's one of the reasons why people want to ship them together. Somehow they have a unique, oh, look at them. <laughs> like my robot friend. <laughs> <laughs> he cares about that little thing, doesn't he? he does. uh, and uh, it just is, um, you know, a shame that they hadn't come together earlier to to work together. So, I mean, I, I hope they don't, um, even though I don't trust Bo, uh, mm -hmm. I really hope that there are more uh, instances where she can be part of, um, you know, Din's team, so to speak. Um, and uh, I, 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 I want them to work together. Um, not so much that I want them to ship together. I want them to work mm -hmm. together uh, because uh, this would be good for Mandalorians. Absolutely. That's why I wished in the second episode that he didn't go there himself. I would have liked for Bo Katan to met Such him there. Like, idea. yeah, I have to see if this is actually true. Yeah, I, I love that idea that you had because uh, that's a great way of having her there 
uh, and and not repeating the same, uh, you know, events over again by her mm -hmm. just kind of being curious and um, like, OK, if anything goes down bad, he's got the, you know, he's got the blade and I don't want anything to happen to the blade. I don't want my opportunity to seize that blade one day. So uh, I'm going to follow him. But like the way it was set up, it was designed for this. I mean, that, your your answer to it was so it's so much easier. One one swoop. <laughs> yeah, it's called you gotta sit down and <laughs> it's almost I kind of liken it as is like motivation. Why should I keep watching? Why should I be watching in the first place? Why do I care that Ben Jarn's going down there besides do you know? cleanse himself and if so why the heck did we have to stop by where bo Tan lives yeah yeah doesn't really make sense to me but if you yeah. do that then it's like okay what are you going to do to continue to keep you know to keep my interest you know yeah. he she thinks that he's a zealot you know well she thinks that he's a zealot and he pretty much thinks that she's an apostate you know it's yeah. it's that kind of that kind of dynamic that i would have loved to that I would have loved to have uh, to have seen with these people. So I thought that this was the episode where I was going to get that. And I was going to have a whole 50 minute yes. episode. Yeah, the way it started, right? Yeah, I'm just like, cool, where are we going next? Where are we yeah. going next? What are we going to talk about? You know, what are we going to, we're going to talk about what happened down there? What's next? <laughs> you know, whatever it was, whatever it was. Some story building. Ben Jarn, yes. Yeah. Baby Yoda and Bo Katan. It's like, what's the next adventure that we're gonna that we're gonna go on? Are we gonna go back and I can say, you know, why the heck were you lying to me about you know the uh atmosphere being poisoned? Uh, you yeah. know, what's what's going on? Yeah. But Oh, I forgot that. Oh, part. yes, yes, yes. I okay. So that this part. Is, yeah, this is really important because this is partly part of the reason why at the end she's making the choice to stay with um, the children of the watch. She doesn't have a home anymore. It's gone. This is not just a home, this is her ancestral home. Yes. So this is um it, everything that she ever stood for is literally gone um mm -hmm. and i'm going to say something really weird but um her way is not working anymore so now the new way with with these you know new guys uh they they may be zealots mm -hmm. but they they're they're still together they're still together right uh so so this this is the way you know this new way mm -hmm. which is trying a new way of um uh, of uh of being a mandalorian because her way wasn't working and now everything about what she stood for and her home and her ancestry is is gone um and and i love this is like a rebirth so of course she's the the convent mm -hmm. uh you know uh not not completely, because I think, you know, there's always going to be remnants of like, okay, well, I still believe this, that, and the other. But I think she's trying to learn. I think she's going to learn as much as she can from these guys. Because mm -hmm. they, and they know about the mythosaur. They know the tales. And they, so she's, she's going to extract some information from these guys. I can't wait to find out what. <laughs> yeah. And the fact that that particular faction probably doesn't know about the mythosaur. So yeah. that's going to be, that's going to be interesting. Yeah. Um, we find out more about, did he really not see it or did he see it and not tell her? It's just yeah. like, Hey, I'm just worried about, you know, I just got redeemed. I don't give a crap about what's, <laughs> about yeah. what's down there. I really, I really don't care. And he probably doesn't under, doesn't know the mythology behind mm -hmm. that. So. I don't think he was even listening when she was speaking, uh, reading mm -hmm. off the black. <laughs> no, he's probably like, look, I, 
I need to get this done, you know, because yeah. that's the only thing on his mind is getting redeemed, redeemed. so he yeah. can get back in the good graces with his uh with his clan. That's like the only thing that he's uh that he's thinking about. But yeah, yeah I forgot her home got basically uh mm -hmm. it's now a pile of ashes. Yeah, it's sad. <sighs> yeah, so yeah, pretty. Which, which was yeah, it was a pretty castle, actually. Yeah. It's interesting. I forgot the name she called them. She's like, those mud something. She yeah, called something. Them, she called them a, a name. One of those Star Wars curses. It, it, it <laughs> wasn't Nerf Herder. It wasn't Bantha Poodoo, but it was something else. Yeah, it was. So, I was like, ooh. Um, yeah, but she yeah, had okay. To pull her out of there. Remember yeah. this? And that's like, too a many of them. So this is another thing that I wanted to 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 set up for this whole thing uh, to mention about this being a um, a possible uh, um, setup or um, them waiting for them because they could have bombed that castle at any point in time. Sure. Why they could have just came in and saw that the castle was bombed already? They were waiting for them. And so this is this is making me feel like oh something's kind of up with this um, this supposed attack, like the timing is just so appropriate um, when it, it really you know they could have just came in and bombed that place, um, and um, uh, yeah I, there's something fishy about it, <laughs> very fishy, very very fishy and. Yeah. I was like, hmm, well, we're going to find out more about that. You know, what, why, are, why were they there in the first place? You know, why did they reduce it to ashes? Where are these TIE fighters? Who is, you know, who are they answering to? Yeah. And uh, that's what uh, that's what I thought I was going to get. There we go. It's like, boom, the Mandalorian. Yeah. yeah. And then all of a sudden, we're on Coruscant. So that's where I thought they went to. So I, was like, I did oh. too. I was like, okay, they went to Coruscant. Okay, I wonder what they're gonna do in Coruscant. Um, and I was like, oh, they're gonna go deep undercover or something. And it, it was a totally different uh, <laughs> story. Told, it was not what I, I was expected. Like, what? I thought they were going to the underworld or something like that, yes. <laughs> shaking down some contacts. Like, yeah, now we're gonna get nitty gritty. Uh huh. What do you know? What do you know? Yeah. What do you know? You need to talk to me. You need to tell me. And that's what yeah. I thought we were gonna get. I didn't think that we were gonna be talking or watching. Um, someone who we haven't seen since season one and that's yeah. dr pershing yeah and um yeah i mean his story is is, is interesting mm -hmm. but it means nothing because you know by the end he's brain fight so his story is meant it, it is it, there will I think this is this is why I was like, oh, I love all this detail and all that stuff. But mm -hmm. honestly, it doesn't matter for us to know that he, you know, the purpose of what he was doing, except for he was trying to do something good. He was and he had good intentions, but he was working for malicious individuals. Mm -hmm. um, I just said that in one sentence. And that's what we <laughs> could have had in the story. You know what I mean? We didn't need to spend five, 10 minutes on, on just that even part yeah. of the story. But uh, I think, too, uh, what I do love about this is that it's showing you that they're making him, uh, th this society of people on Coruscant mm -hmm. um, are pretty much run the same way that they were run when the uh th when the empire ran it you know yes yeah. and it's funny you should bring that up because there is a scene i believe after this i want to call them like the governmental sycophants you know where they're just like uh oh. empire new republic same thing <laughs> same thing yeah same you know same uh same 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 old same yeah. old thing and um it's it's interesting because in the eu books and i can't remember which one it was where they talk about the danger of the new republic mm -hmm. becoming just as bad 
as the empire. That was something um, that was, I would say, a realistic fear mm -hmm. that they didn't want to become an instance of the very thing that um that they fought against but yeah exactly what he said here empire yeah. rebels <laughs> republic i can't keep track of it yeah <laughs> yeah and, and and before that that was the old republic and they pretty much yes the same Coruscant was the same through it all uh and they they had dignitaries and people with a lot of money and um didn't really care about small worlds that were being attacked or no. people were enslaved and um i'm not sure if at this point slavery um is still around but there i remember um back in obi-wan they were talking about slavery was still yes. a thing. and was so still a thing. yeah and so I, I it's just sort of um uh you know this republic is just is not doing uh the at most and also uh, the um the rich people that they never had to fight in anything no they're on coruscant yeah. living you know the uh the good life it's not like they're on the outer rim it's not like you know they have to scrounge to get an existence they're on a world that is very well supplied exactly, um, with yeah. lots of I want to say uh, maybe amenities, not safety net, but yes, but like, you know, but like, yeah, exactly. Like amenities, they're the center of the galaxy. Mm -hmm. They're the center of power in the galaxy, whether it's the empire, whether it's the new Republic, it yeah. is the seat of, uh, of power. So that's all they care about. They don't really yeah. care about Jawas on Tatooine or, you know, the Wookiees on Kashyyyk or anything like that. They don't really yeah. care. You know, and, and, it, and they definitely don't care about Pershing because he goes there and he talks to them, but then he he has such a, a provincial situation set up for him. It's very um, uh, un, like his job is is so monotonous and boring, and mm -hmm. he there he's living in. Um, in these quarters, they they don't really care about him. They're just like, oh, this is oh, so thank you for your service and mm -hmm. thank you, um, and you're so brave uh, because that's the new uh, the new thing that they're interested. It's in the new conversation they can have, um, but they they don't really want to get involved. You know, they, none of them came to visit him. None of them wanted to talk to him about his research. Um, mm -hmm. they, you know, it's all superficial. Um, and so, and I think I'm, I'm sure there's a commentary in there about real life. Uh, but I like that it's not spelled out for you and not, it doesn't really say one side or another. It just, it's just making, it's making a commentary about, um, about society and societies. Mm -hmm. So I, I did love, I love that. Um. But um, uh, it sounds like something that would be in <laughs> Andor. <laughs> yeah. And, and a funny thing <laughs> is this scene here reminded me, they ripped this straight off of uh, Total Recall. Yes. Yes. Johnny Cab. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Have a nice like, day. <laughs> cab, you know. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I just, I, that part wasn't lost on me. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's like total, like total. Oh, yes, like, there's a lot of jokes in this thing yes. that are just unnecessary, but. <laughs> like, here you go. Here yeah. you are. And let you know where you want to go. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. we find out he's you know, among the, I want to call it like the witness protection program mm -hmm. in, uh, yeah. in a way for the new the Republic amnesty program. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The amnesty program where it's mm -hmm. just like, you know, I, I was only doing what the empire told me to do. Like, yeah, yeah. 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 I got a story <laughs> too. You got a story too. We got a story. Everybody's got a story, you know, and I kind of started to get lost with, with this part. Well, I want to say lost. I would say a lack of interest on mm. uh, on this part because it seemed to go too long and I thought it was going to be more of a B plot. Yeah. And we just kept 
going, meeting <laughs> these other extraneous people who I yeah. guess I thought were going to be red shirts or something like that. These yeah. people we've ne never met before. Um, like, why are, why are they, why are they interesting? And you know, why, why are they, why are they here? Again, I yeah. thought it was just going to be a B plot, but it just, you know, it kept, uh, it kept going. Yeah. And I, I do believe that this is all a setup that all of these people are working together. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, the way he was sort of ushered over, it, it was almost like, you better come over or we're going to, uh, we're going to make a big stink about it. It was, it, it wasn't something he could get away from. He had to sit mm -hmm. down because they were, um, they were specifically there to lure him in to talk to her, uh, <laughs> and, mm -hmm. um, sh for her to get close. Um, and I don't know if she's paying them in biscuits or something, but yeah, she's, uh, they, <laughs> she has got, uh, uh, some, uh, special, um, uh, I would say if you, if you watch this again, you can see the eye contact, um, mm -hmm. is, is, uh, that she has with people around her yeah. it's a little bit different. Um, and yeah, it, it's very uh, interesting the way she pulls him in. Like, uh, you want me to show you around, you know? Uh, mm -hmm. Well, you know, at first he's like, um, you know, I, I remember you, you were on off Gideon ship. And she's like, yeah, well now I want to help the Republic. Just like you. Just like you. <laughs> just like you. I was we like, oh, lied, was right? <laughs> Yeah, I'm just like mm, something's up with this. Something, something's just not quite right. Yeah, <laughs> um, not and, quite right. And this, you know, intense, um, like revolving talking about like, oh, I want to help the republic. I want to help the republic, and my research will help the republic. And but they don't want me to help the republic. Um, and I feel like she was um just there to to guide him and to like are you know are you a threat what do you you know what do you know and are you a threat because if you're mm -hmm. a threat i will you know she'll do what she she end up do doing she ends up doing um mm -hmm. because uh it's not so much i think he's told the um He's told the republic, uh, the republic, everything he knows already. So he's already given up all the information about the cloning and all that. Mm -hmm. But um, in which they are just going to dispose anyway because it's illegal. Um, yeah. But <laughs> but he's uh, what what she's identifying, I, I believe, is sort of like a theory. Not I'm not the only one who thinks this, but I think what she's identifying is could he be a threat to the remnants of the empire that's that's building like could uh you know could he be used on the other side to hurt the empire and he's like yes i i want to help uh the republic and you know wrong answer <laughs> yeah you should have been like you know what um I'm i don't just, care anymore <laughs> i just don't care anymore whatever you know i just want to keep my head down mind my, my business <laughs> Exactly. And, you know, go someplace where I can, I can help. Yeah. And, and there are possibly thousands of places for him to help in, in a scientific nature, but, um, you know, specifically with cloning, it's against the law and mm -hmm. he, he still wants to pursue it. And, um, you know, with her coaxing, he also convinces himself that, Hey, mm -hmm. There, you know, I could do this. Um, uh, oh, the, the Are biscuits. these biscuits really yeah. that good? Well, see, I think those biscuits may be drugged. <laughs> I would have to agree with you because I was just like, those do not look appetizing. They look like drug packets. <laughs> I think they're drugged, um, maybe not like a severe amount of drugs, but enough like uh, to suggest things, right? 
Um, mm. And I, I thought it was, uh, it was interesting. It could be a, you know, a theory, but also those biscuits represent um, a, sort of an alliance with the empire. So she's also setting him up by giving him those biscuits. He takes them to work. They go through his drawer. There's the biscuits from the empire, you mm -hmm. know? So, so he's, he's, uh, you know, taking all of the bait that she's giving him to yes. hang himself to, you know, basically. Um, and it's, it's just so sad because he does want to do good and he does want to do more but he can't because um they, they have him doing uh dumb work they have him yeah be uh you know this bureaucracy has kind of stuck him doing an endless job uh and then he discovers that that all of the the stuff is being thrown away and deleted now yes. uh, mm -hmm. now one thing i i i i i heard in in um after I, my second watch was that they were dismantling all of the empire stuff, but they were also uh, dismantling all of the rebel uh, yes. stuff as well, which I was like, why are you doing that? And this makes sense because this is how the new order actually um, takes over. Um, because from uh, from some lore, uh, I can't really remember exactly which lore it was. Uh, pirates uh, became overrun in the systems, and uh, they uh, they had to be controlled. So the new order stepped in, and that's how they gained control again. Mm. So with the rebel ships and rebel um, fleet being dismantled. They're really um, at a disadvantage. They have no, um, you know, they have no resources, and it's uh, they're they're not prepared for what's coming. Yeah, and that's what it seems like. Doctor Person was saying, "Is like why why are you you need to use this this yeah. stuff?" And it seems like they're just demilitarizing everything, which me total incomplete sense yeah. to me to do that. And he's just kind of like, nobody listens to me. I'm not really making a difference. It seems like the new Republic isn't as great as I thought it was going to be. And of course, oh you know, he gets bought by a popsicle. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> Biscuits and popsicles. Popsicle Biscuits because... and popsicles. <laughs> you, you know, and he's just like, oh, I just want to do, I just want to do something meaningful with my life. You know? Yeah. And I, I love how she tests him uh, to see how far he will go by, by uh, presenting that, uh, that mountain rock and like, go ahead and touch it. And, you know, nothing's going to mm -hmm. happen. Touch it. And he is, uh, you know, I, and I, it might be the biscuits suggest, you know, giving him the suggest, letting him breaking mm -hmm. down his, his, uh, su uh, suggestion, um, his ability to resist re uh, suggestions. And he just like goes for it. And of course it's, uh, you know, it, there's a problem with that, that, you know, he gets busted by the, the, uh, the robot police and, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> And I love her her response to it. She's like, ah, just you know, looking at your face, and mm -hmm. it's like she loves the game. Yes, she loves the game. She this is a cat and mouse game, and she loves it. Um, it's it's just so when you like, it's sort of creepy the way she goes after him in this. Um, Thing. And I, I really didn't pick it up the first time as I wasn't, you know, I guess I didn't, I didn't know what was going to happen. But the second watch, I was like, ooh, she's creepy. <laughs> yeah, very like enticing. Like, hey, it's fun to break the rules, isn't it? <laughs> you know, in a way, don't you, don't you like that? Don't you want something more? Don't you want something better? You know, and he's the perfect patsy because he feels completely unfulfilled yeah. and, it seems like she's completely happy. And it's like, oh, how can you, you know, be like that through, um, through all of this? Uh, yeah. Is, is that the George <laughs> picking up yeah. the, uh, 
picking up the uh the popsicle the fizz, fizz pops i forgot what it was called yeah um, it was something yeah and, and i this is great too you know the psych drawer drawer i did like this him. part um and i think she she questions him three times and i uh, I guess I understand why uh, filmmakers still do the three times to get it into our, you know, the viewer's brain. But I think one time is just enough. Um, uh, but or even twice, like you, you show one time where it it it's fine, and then you mm -hmm. show the second time where it's not fine. I can, but three times is too much. Um, they can just dump that three rule, three times rule out the window it doesn't work anymore yeah it did seem extremely repetitive it's kind of we don't need like a groundhog day yeah situation so to speak <laughs> it's just like if you build the story up enough and enough of the intrigue enough when he starts questioning the psych droid we know why mm -hmm. and it takes yes. and it takes that uh, it takes less time because by the third time He's dealing with the psych where he's like, I freaking had it. Yeah. And he tries to go off script. And yeah. the droid's just like, uh, no. He's the he can do it, but it's Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and he's just like, Oh, my research can be used for good. And this is how she knows that he is wide That's open yeah. and ripe to mm -hmm. be use what do you need what yeah. would you need in order to do this yeah you know you want to help the new republic they just can't see it yet yeah yeah <laughs> i love i love the temptation though it was it was great i mean this is a different kind of way of doing it though right because um uh, a lot of other times they would just have like a really uh feminine looking girl so that was like would be tempting him with uh like a romance right uh, mm -hmm. like to and this time it's it's just uh a charismatic uh lady that that, that seems like a friend not so much like you know a, a love interest and and she's able to kind of do this uh, manipulation and he's just so uh easy to to, to very yeah and very easy um the way her like her body language everything about what she's doing is like i have done this hundreds of times before mm -hmm. this is not her first time taking down somebody like him no it is social engineering and you can yeah. see how good she is it's like laying the trap and laying you know <laughs> the bait which he eagerly eats up because he you know like we said earlier he definitely wants to do good he wants yeah. to feel like he's helping yeah the republic he really does want to but almost to the point of being blind mm -hmm. to being A naive uh, and yeah. yes very much so absolutely naive. Like the first thing you do when you, you know amnesty program and you're with a whole bunch of people that used to be um, on the you know uh, on the team you were in maybe you don't trust them so much. I mean, my thing would be like, yeah, um, <laughs> I'm, what, I'm looking at I'm looking at you. You know, <laughs> like I would not be ready to trust people that, especially if somebody who worked so closely with Moff Gideon. Um, she was she was in high rank uh, on that ship too. So yeah, was she like his right hand or something? Yeah, she, uh, well the the communications officer, I think. Um, uh -huh. And I oh. I just I, I I think he was um, so lonely, so um, uh, it still had like ambitions of you know of greatness. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. uh to be a and, and juxtaposing this this moment here uh or or him at the desk versus him sitting at the ted talk <laughs> the ted talk and, yeah and, and being the center of attention where everybody is kind of giving him all of this praise for being a good person and being so um 
uh, you know, um, smart. And um, mm -hmm. yeah, he he didn't um, he didn't like being uh, minimized, um, and nobody does. But uh, again, the fact this is also showing us again. This is what the society has done to this fully capable person. It, mm -hmm. it is doing the same thing that the empire did um, to say someone um, um, in, in, uh, in the days of the empire, like, it, uh, like an Andor. Um, I forgot the name of the character that sits at the desk all the time, that one guy. Um, but, he, you know, they're, they're very similar paths. They're sitting at a desk doing monotonous work and mm -hmm. it, it's endless. And they go home to like corridors that look like jail cells. Uh, there's no, um, mm. you know, nothing beautiful about this, even though they live in this beautiful city. You know, so it's, it must be miserable for him. This is easy. Here's a friend offering some help for him mm -hmm. to live a different life. And uh, he falls. What a trap. What a trap. He does. He falls right, right into it and to quote vader all too easy <laughs> yeah, all too easy you know? <laughs> and he's like psyching himself up here you're yes you're yes like, you're doing good you're doing good you know it's like he has to psych him you know psych himself up mm -hmm. and, to, and uh, if you notice they it. they focused in on the box of um of, yes uh, yes i did i did notice yeah. that yeah and um yeah. He he put down his suit, um, his um, amnesty suit, and and mm -hmm. laid it all nice and fresh, saying goodbye to it almost. And and these biscuits there, the the influence of uh, the empire. Yeah, it's just like you had it good in the empire, didn't you? I was yeah. important mm -hmm. in the empire. You know, my work was important. You know, and. Okay, so this guy, mm -hmm. he knows what's up. He know he know he's seen this before, and that's why he's like taking a look at like, oh, she's with somebody new. Okay, so his eyes are on attention, looking mm -hmm. to see what's going on. Oh, you'll get the hang of it. Yeah. You know, this is. And then uh, when when they do this, it's like it's almost like everybody has seen her before. Like mm -hmm. <laughs> it just feels like like this is not her first time uh, uh, doing all this stuff. She knows everything about this operation, how to sneak in, how to um, you know. Yes. Yeah, and there are guards everywhere. That we we saw one of the guards right there. Uh, he turned a blind eye to it because he knew this was a setup. You know. Yeah, she was just in <laughs> just the way that he looks <laughs> with this. He's just like, am I doing the right thing? Okay, well, you know, it's too late now. I'm just going to have yeah. to, you know, go uh, go along with it. And she's constantly, you know, stroking his ego. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just, you know, simple job in and out and we're back. Yeah. Before you, yeah, you know, before you know it. But we already know. We're just like, nah. We know this is not uh, a <laughs> go down the way that uh, the way that we think. Yeah, that it's I, gonna go down. I did love this train. The way it was like sort of a snake, like a snake. I was like, oh, that's cool. I don't think I've ever seen that before in Star Wars. Unless I must have blinked twice and <laughs> not seen mm -hmm. it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was that was what for some reason that just reminded me of public transit. <laughs> oh yes, yes. With, the, oh, with the buses, the dual, uh, the like the I call it the super stretch bus. Oh yeah, the those buses and um, the just like train tracks, uh, uh, and in the subway station, um, if you're if you're traveling while the door while it's in motion, it's like mm -hmm. it's kind of scary because. You're like, okay, am I gonna? 
when I was little, it was like that. But when you're a grown up, it's not so bad. <laughs> yeah, when you're little, it's like everything huge. seems so so huge and much bigger. And she's like, "Trust me." And we're like, "No, do not trust this chick." Like, I know. <laughs> <laughs> do not, do not trust this chick. She got you jumping off of trains. You know. Yeah all of all of that type of thing. I have to be honest, by this point, I had tuned out. <laughs> because I'm just like, where's Mando? Where's, where's Baby Mama? Yoda? Yeah. Where's, you know, where's Bo? You know, it's where's gone Bo on. It's gone on a little too long, even though this is, I mean, in my opinion, I love it. it, it it's just not the, it's, it, it's out of place. Um, and not just that it's out of place, it's too much of it at one mm -hmm. go. Exactly. That's the thing. It's like if they would have intercut this over the past two episodes or even even yeah. the past three episodes and intercut exactly. it truly as a B story, as like a mystery that slowly to starts like that. to, you know, that starts to evolve. I did like this shot though, with like the Imperial Star Destroyer. Wasn't it like, cool? You know, yeah. Scrapyard. I thought that was pretty cool. I yeah. thought that was really cool. Enough, but yeah, it's just like it went, it was going on too long to the point where I didn't care about her. I didn't care about Dr. Pershing. I knew he was going to get busted one way or the other. Yeah, you know it was going going bad. Yeah. You know, were you sure we're alone? Of course, of course, and you she, know. She's like, oh, yeah, we've done, I've done it so many times, uh, you know, and she has actually, but <laughs> that well, was not a way. Yeah, yeah, not the way that you think, right? Yeah, I thought these little bugs with the lights were very unique. I was like, what's happening? What are they doing? Um, it was kind of weird seeing them. I was just like, what is, are they eating the wires? What's, what's happening? <laughs> I haven't seen... Well, anytime I think of, like, creatures eating wires this... and stuff, I think of the Minox. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. This scene in particular. So this is setting her up as being a sociopath because mm -hmm. here she is. She's going to do this horrible thing to him. And she makes it personal by saying, okay, uh, here, you know, hi, my name is, you know, introduce, reintroducing herself. So she knows who she's uh, taking down and he knows who she is. Um, and by the way, I wanted to also point out that in this um new regime mm -hmm. these guys are not names but they are numbers um you know uh, mm. he's uh what, what was his name is his his number is l52 and she is g 48 because wait yeah because they did they they explained those in the beginning right um yeah no yeah when they in, all introduce themselves that's what they they introduce themselves that's as what numbers. i remembered mm -hmm. yeah and it's like oh wow uh they're not even given uh the opportunity to use their own names no. um and so again the regime is hasn't changed their uh methods uh even in um in the empire you know all the clones were numbers as well not mm -hmm. the clones, but the um, <laughs> but the stormtroopers. Yeah, it's like, what's your designation? Yeah. <laughs> it was that looked too much like a modern day laser printer. I, I it did, yes. That did kind of throw me off. It's just like, uh, y'all could have did better than just phone it in like this. I was not but, impressed with the lab at all. I no. thought it would be more um, high tech. Um, and it but, was just. Yeah. Yeah, I was like, as you can see, some really crazy experiments, I wanna, right? Experiments. I want to say something as sleek as what we saw. Was it on Camino, the planet where they uh, where they made all the clone troopers? Yes, yes. From that was a slick lab. That's what I thought we were going to. Uh, we were going to yeah, see like, this. What is was, this? This was this was really uneventful and not really impressive yeah no and at, at all but then yeah that's, goes the, on, that's the only thing here. i thought the budget like they're ooh. <laughs> they ran out of money or something <laughs> yeah it just didn't 
there was just nothing impressive um, about it. And then, of course, he goes into the story about his mother. I'm like, oh, okay, that's not good when they start doing all this exposition. Mm-hmm. Where it's talking about her and that, you know, she was a doctor and he wanted to help her. And in his mind, he's thinking he's doing, he's doing the right thing. Yeah. But, uh-oh, hands <laughs> up, who are you? Who are you? You always can tell the New Republic with their clunky uniform. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. It's like, what do we have here? Wait, it's, you knew. Mm-hmm. And then when she starts, when you find out, get confirmation that she's the one who basically set him up. Yeah. It it, it was it was sort of like, yep, we knew. <laughs> it wasn't a surprise. It was not a surprise. No. But I think it it was laid at this whole thing is just a just to show us the the lengths that she's going to trap people. Um, uh, to get rid of any threats and to um, render anybody who was involved um, uh, un, uh, uh, unavailable uh, or decommissioned or <laughs> you know mm-hmm. inoperable because he, he doesn't she doesn't kill him. She, the the mind flare is uh is uh definitely uh gonna clear things up for him. Uh, meant you know he's not going to remember anything. No. Yeah. I also find it funny that they <laughs> maybe it's coincidental because you do know the mind flayer is mentioned in Stranger Things. Oh. Yeah, that kind of I was like mind flayer. What? What? Like in Stranger Things? <laughs> I but I just found that interesting. I think they used it before. I'm not sure if they used it before. For, um, for something else, because it, it was a technique that was used by the empire um, to, you know, to torture people, and mm-hmm. um, it, it, it this reminded me a lot of uh, Deidre using those mind um, uh, altering um, devices on um, uh, on one of the characters during the Andor. Um, oh, okay. See, I didn't. Yeah, see the and so <laughs> sort of left her without like crazy, and she couldn't like function mentally. Mm-hmm. And so I think uh, you know this should render him, um, maybe a vegetable, but <laughs> but also uh, maybe just not remembering anything at all to do with the empire. Mm-hmm. Um, just a and, good little drone, you know. Just do yeah. your job and. And I love how it's, uh, I, f- I forget the species. I keep calling Juan them Calamari. Juan Calamari. Yeah. yeah. I call them squid yeah. people. I forget the, I forget the designation of his species, but he's just so matter of fact. Oh yeah. I love it. That was you the best part. It. I mean, I wanted to see that up front. Yeah, <laughs> I did. I was like, yeah, let's see him get, make, can you make this worth my while? And, <laughs> you know, and see this dude's brain get fried a little bit. He's like, oh, I've been through the treatment myself, but I found it quite impressive. <laughs> it feels rather tingly. No, he didn't say that. Mm-hmm. But <laughs> <laughs> and she's just like, yeah, it's uh, it's all too easy. Yeah. She's it was just all very, all, very cold and methodical um and I, I yeah i definitely think she's a sociopath she enjoyed it way too much um uh, to be a normal person uh mm-hmm. and uh it, they were already going to give him an adjustment if you will but uh why did she decide to go crank that sucker all the way up and I mean, she's so trusted that they left her in the room. Yes. So they they really trust her. Um, well, thank you for bringing us another one, you know? Yeah. Um, so she's proving herself, you know, loyal <laughs> to the to the Republic, but she's mm-hmm. anything but. Uh, uh, and... Uh, 
possibly working for someone. We don't know who, if it's Thrawn or it's Gideon or somebody else, but she's working for somebody. Somebody, because it's yeah. one high. You, again, it goes back to the biscuits. It sounds simple, yeah. mm -hmm. but something like that, first of all, that he remembered those, that those yeah. were his favorite things. I really like the biscuit. Oh, okay. Well, and I know exactly what to bait this trap with. The fact that she even had access to those types of things. It's like that immediately. You know, that didn't set up, you know, the alarms yeah. going off. But we know it's something <laughs> she's got some kind of hookup. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's uh that's going does. on. Yeah. She's just like, yeah, uh-huh. Yeah. I hope he just gets the help that uh that he needs. Not really, but <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> not really, really, but not uh, but not really. So basically, bye bye. Yeah. Dr. Pershing. And then she eats a biscuit. And and yeah. if you notice, um, you know, again, I think the biscuits really signify her loyalty to the the empire. Mm -hmm. Um, if they're not drugged. <laughs> yeah. There's something in them. Yeah. <laughs> something in them but yeah you're right it's like she signifies like the um the empire mm -hmm. reassembling itself under yeah. a, a different uh, uh she's, under a, different she's a scary character because of her willingness to psychologically you know mess with people to the point to the point that she does um mm -hmm. it, it, it's um it's the actions of a sociopath, and uh, I I hope they do you know work on this character and make her interesting, uh, give her a storyline that's befitting what they've already you know laid down. Because if this was all for like her to you know take orders as a calm character on another mm -hmm. um, spaceship, I'm like. Ugh. Guys, <laughs> I would be very upset. Do something with this character. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to be happy because you basically spent 80% of this darn episode around, you know, around this. And yeah. literally with 10 minutes left that we're in the episode, you know, then we finally get back to Din Djarin, Baby Yoda, and of course, Bo Katan yeah. is yeah. with him. And you know, they go back. I am forgetting this dude's name. Um, uh, he's Pat, always he's Paz, always challenging Paz Visla. Paz Visla, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's always got beef with Manda. Yeah. Um it's like, why are you back here? <laughs> oh man, that that was such a nice um visual of the ship just sitting there and she just comes off right on the side mm -hmm. right there just it reminds me of some um of the old uh japanese anime um and uh voltron too it kind of reminds me of voltron yes. yeah which yeah. reminds me i got voltron on my watch list on a netflix oh, really? I didn't even, yeah i didn't even know the new one was out i'm like what Okay, so well, I was like, that's on, my, that's on my list. Good. Yeah, I will because I, I freaking loved old school Voltron. Me too. But you're, that you're, but you're right. This ship is kind of reminiscent mm -hmm. of uh, and how little she is. Yeah, and she's so mm -hmm. tiny. <laughs> and of course, this pause vessel. Like, yeah, why is this dude back here? Why'd you bring this loser back here? He's not even a real Mandalorian. It's like <laughs> I've been to the mines of Mandalore and I've bathed in Lake Minnetonka. I'm gonna keep making that joke because it's so <laughs> funny. Um, but they're just like, uh, no, the planet's poisoned. And Din Jorans is exactly what I said around episode two. Was it a cover story? Was it a lie? Why did they say that the atmosphere was poisoned when it really yeah. wasn't? And I figured there must be something more nefarious going on. They want to keep them in the dark for whatever reason. And he basically says it's lies to keep us uh, keep us alive. Yeah. And yeah, Paz Vistle baby basically says, Yeah, your house has fallen from the way you're both apostates. Yeah. <laughs> it's basically saying you're just as bad, you know, 
as uh as she is yeah it was i i love that a whole interaction i just wanted more of it my gosh that's it. and that's what i was that's what i was wanting to say and yoda's baby was like what you talk bad about my daddy <laughs> i choke you yeah uh <laughs> I choke you. This is why I'm so glad that it's not CGI and it's a and it's a puppet okay. that has to that has to react. I love it because he was just like, I am not freaking amused with uh with you people mm -hmm. at uh at all. At all. So I think this was the scene where they go and they go to see the armor and she's like, uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> and like, how do you know that you bathe? He's like, it is. I have proof. So he brought like a water sample back mm -hmm. and the armor tests it. And it's like, uh, yeah, it's legit. <laughs> he has indeed been, they are indeed the living waters. And she tells him, you know, you're redeemed. And Bo Katan, have you not removed your helmet? And she's like, no. And she said, okay, well, you were also redeemed then. Like, yeah. oh, okay, wow. so now she's stuck with the zealots that <laughs> she didn't particularly care for. Yeah. Because like you were saying earlier, Retro Nerd Girl, she really has no, no other place to go. No. I, and I think, um, you know, uh, a little bit further on, you know, people are like welcoming them into the fold and, and, and patting them and giving them... Um, you know, congratulations or whatever is <laughs> telling them, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. I, 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 I knew that Din was happy. I mean, if you could see uh, what was under his mask, he was smiling and I, yeah. I think, yeah, yeah, he was, he did like a little side slap and he was like, you know, a little nod. And I was like, yes, Din, thank, thank goodness. He, he's happy and complete. And she was kind of like, what? Like you can see, she was kind of shocked by you know, yeah. This, and it's been a long time since she had a group of people that um, that were around her that supported her. I mean, even with the night owls, there was there's only there was only what uh, three of them, uh, two or, or three of them. Yeah, it wasn't that many. Yeah, and so she's she's in a group of Man Mandalorians for real, real, and uh, these guys are zealots. But they are the ones that have kept the stories of the old ways, the old traditions, the old um, beliefs in the Mandalor um, the Mandalorian legends. So right. she can learn about those things from them. She can learn about uh, the mythosaur and the stories behind it from the armorer or whoever she can get to talk to. Um, mm -hmm. So I think this is her opportunity to to do just that to to kind of uh, assess like exactly how she can do that. She's going to need some people to rule because as it stands now, she technically is the ruler, but she's got no one that's following her, right? So I think she, in order for her to proclaim herself as the ruler, which I'm not sure that might be if if that is con something she'll continue to want to do is that she, she has to go about this completely differently from the way she has been doing it. Mm -hmm. um, she has to now see if these um, the children of the watch has the answer for her. And, and again, like who, who are you going to rule? These are the guys that's left. Everybody else is dispersed. So the only people to rule are these guys. Uh, and they also hold the key to restoring Mandalorian culture. Uh, so mm -hmm. it, it, I think she's going to learn what she can from them before she does anything. Like before she, um, you know, gets pissed off and, and takes off her helmet or whatever. Because um, right. this is an opportunity for her. Um, she saw something in Din. You know, especially when she told him the story about his, uh, her father and he said, uh, this is the way, you mm -hmm. know, uh, it, like she she's seeing how loyal he is. He believes and he's willing to go into uh, the weird waters 
murky wa dark waters to to get redemption so something is going on with the children of the watch that she can learn from um and i think if she is a smart leader she is gonna do just that she's gonna learn what she can out of uh, from these guys and and not be like oh I should I should be the one you know she can't go in there and and demand her own way she's gotta right. she's gotta fold her legs and she's gotta you know give herself to the possibilities and then after she's learned everything she can learn then she can start to introduce other ideas but not now mm -hmm. you know I, yeah Nah, yeah, she's not in a position to right now, which is going to be interesting seeing how Bo Katan is going to adjust being in this particular covert, which seems to be against everything that she believes about being uh being a Mandalorian. All right, so ladies. Why don't you give, why don't we give our verdicts what we would rate this episode Ooh. of The Mandalorian? So why don't we start with her mm, and let us know what you think, scale of one to 10. I gave it a 10 out of 10. And as you guys know, um, I do like how this funny dynamic between Bo-Katan and Din is playing out. She saves him, but he says he didn't see anything under the water, but I don't believe Din. I think he did see something and that they're playing each other. And then of course, what happens, you know, she can't go back to the palace to drink her Cinzano or Prosecco anymore. <laughs> going up her house, right? And it is just, just deserves. He says, you got to come with me. I think it's ironic that she ends up having to join the very group of cultists that she made fun of earlier, blaming them for the, you know, breakup of Mandalore, the destruction of Mandalore. And now she's readily accepted as one. And they're also saying, yeah, we know your house was blown up, honey. And now you're just like us. You're no better than us. They all mm -hmm. know and is and it's going to be an uncomfortable state for her. Paz Vizsla didn't even want to let her in the front door. Uh, sure, Mando. But the best part was when they went to Curacao. And I, I don't know if you guys know this, but I spend my weekends and vacation time in Curacao when I can. Um, I <laughs> beautiful city. I like to go. You know, before the Empire, I used to go visit Mon Mothma at her parties. It was a beautiful place to hang out. It's the best place in the world. And I'm shocked that they would allow Pershing to be in such a great place. But it was interesting seeing him give his speech at the opera and seeing everybody kind of look down on him saying, well, you are glad that you're not doing any more of that nasty cloning work, aren't you? And he's like, well, you don't understand, it's my life. And it's like, there was always gonna be this disconnect. But Katie O'Brien, boy, she was the best thing out of Quantum Mania this year. And now she's one of turning out to be one of the best things in Star Wars as she totally messes this man up because he knows everything that she's done bad with Moff Gideon and she has to get rid of him. And boy, what a fun episode this was. Uh, Cause you could just see Bo-Katan crying under that helmet. Thank God. the helmet <laughs> over with, Hiding those tears. <laughs> wow. Well, well, we have that rave review retro nerd girl. What would you give this episode out of 10? Oh man. So I have a love-hate relationship with this. Well, actually, no, no. Mm. Love, uh, love kind of hate. <laughs> sorry. Um, I gave it a seven. And I, well, stop, sorry, 7.5. Um, and the reason why I gave it 7.5, I loved um, uh, all the information in this episode. And there's so much of it. There's so much information. Um, however, I felt like they didn't understand, they, they couldn't keep the tone uh, great. It's a, it different like tones going on. I compared it before mm -hmm. as like having ice cream and spaghetti on the same plate <laughs> at the same time, right? Um, mm -hmm. They're both delicious separately. And so, I don't know, I was thinking that maybe they could have, um, what they could have done with the Pershing section or, or what people are calling the Andor section, uh, is that they could have gotten that and kind of mixed it, uh, chopped it up a little bit and put it into uh, the second episode and kind of spaced it out a little bit 
and and stopped it from uh, stopped that episode from feeling like it was so redundant. Because a lot of people said that that epi- the sec- episode two was very redundant, and this episode had a different flow. So if maybe some of the scenes could have been uh, interwoven a quite differently. But all of the information, though, is stuff that we really need to know. And so that's why I, I think part of it is, is brilliant and awesome, uh, but it just has a story structure issue. Um, it's mm-hmm. almost like someone had the storyboards for this and kind of uh, uh, and kind of put them in the wrong order, and so that that's really my my biggest critique on it. Um, but I, I loved all of the world building and and everything to do with um, um, what was going on with Bo and uh, Din. I was so happy for them at the end uh, that they, you know, that they were welcomed into uh, the fold. And, and we could probably talk more about the details of that. But it, it was just... Um, uh, really, I felt so great for them by the end of the the episode. So that was it. Ended on a high note, and mm-hmm. I felt as if the centerpiece was definitely, um, you know, all the stuff that you really, really need to know about. Uh, at first, you think it's it's about uh, Doctor Pershing, which everybody thinks it's about uh, Pen. Pershing, but it's not. It's really about Aliyah uh, Kane and her work uh, for the Empire, pretending to be, uh, uh, you know, a sympathizer for the uh, or, or rising up the ranks of the um, the, the Republic. Republic. Yeah, the New Republic, and it's just kind of like, okay, I see where this is going. I, I see where this can go. Um, and, and, and all of that is juicy character building. Uh, we learn so much. We learn about what's going on, uh, uh, with, um, uh, we, we are learning what's happening, um, to the Republic, the new Republic mm-hmm. and how much it's just like the empire in many ways, you know? And so it, it's, it's, uh, it, it's, it's great, but again, that I had to give it just a seven because it, and the story structure is a big issue for me and a lot of people, I think, too. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So we have a 10 out of 10. <laughs> we have a 7.5 out of 10. So what your girl gave it, uh, I actually gave this a five. Okay. Oh, <laughs> I gave this a five. After the last episode, I'm like, all right, we got Din Djarin, we got Bo-Katan, we got Baby Yoda. Guess what? Boom. We're going to head off to another venture and we're going to get that conversation. Did you see what I thought you saw under there? You know, I thought we'd get more interaction between the two of them, more with respect to learning about those particular factions, um, you know, with the with Din Djarin's faction, I keep forgetting, Children of the Watch, and, you know, the Bo-Katan. So trying to, I was waiting for that. What I did not expect was to get dropped into a quasi-episode of Andor. I know people love it. I personally am um, not really all that interested in seeing it. And for me, this felt like a bait and switch, which I do not like. And if this was, say, and I, I think what I want to say goes back to what Retro Nerd Girl was talking about with, you know, with the problem with the story. If the thing with Dr. Pershing was a B plot, and even if we'd seen maybe glimpses of that with him instead of dropping it all into this episode because we haven't seen dr person since what season one yeah or something like that season one and then all of a sudden you drop this dude i mean it's obviously a very interesting and pertinent story but you bring this character out of nowhere which we really don't have that much of a bond to and dedicate 80 percent of the episode to that So for me, as someone who 
expect I want to I need my serious Mandalorian and baby Yoda fix and yes. I didn't get it yes. I feel some kind of way about that so again I give this episode a five just because of that the show is called the Mandalorian not the scientist who is going to do some genetic stuff on baby Yoda who we haven't heard from nor seen flashbacks of because how interesting would it have been to intercut scenes of Dr. Pershing being quote unquote rehabilitated, getting into that particular program. I mean, that would have been great world building in a way doing it, but not at the expense of learning more about the Mandalorian. So that was my whole thing with it. Was it craft well crafted? Yes but in the wrong spot for me. It's just like, no. So you cannot have 80% of an episode that doesn't revolve around the main character of, you know, of the show. So I was quite disappointed um, in being given this. So I'm hoping that next week it will actually be better but this episode, frankly, like CSI, all I need to do is watch the first 10 minutes and the last 10 minutes <laughs> of the oh, show. <laughs> well, I, I think for me, when I think about um, who that episode was about, it wasn't really about Dr. Pershing. It was about uh, Elia Kane mm -hmm. and how she is still working for Moff Gideon and she's you know, fooling everybody. I, did they have to use Dr. Pershing as an example? No, I think they could have gone a cleverer route. Um, and I did like seeing Curacao, as you guys know, I love that city, that that planet. But mm -hmm. um, that whole episode, you know, although he was kind of the victim in it, um, it's about her gaining power again, which she will get in the New Republic. She'll be an inside agent or a double agent or whatever mm -hmm. for Moff, who allegedly has escaped and mm -hmm. so she's going to be one of the major villains in the story. So, so for me, that was the actual focus of that whole thing. Um, I guess they like Doctor Me too. Yeah, to use him and focus on him. But you know, the story it was a little corny to see him kind of be so gullible and uh, you know walk down this path of silliness. However, um, she they tried to make her look as evil as possible, but he's so easy to manipulate. I'm not quite sure whether she she bumped up the evil factor. <laughs> I didn't. It's just I. The way I looked at it, I was like, "This is a person that I don't care about." <laughs> it's just like I'm like, "Who is this person? I've never seen her before." I guess is there. I guess if they're using, you know, they were using Pershing, it's kind of like the gateway drug to it. And yes, I agree. Eventually, you did find out that it wasn't really about him. He was the fall guy. It was more about her. But I'm just like, I'm here to watch The Mandalorian. Yeah. And if you're going to do this, don't make it 80%. Yeah. Give us these nuggets where we're just like, did, did, I, did I see that? What? Did, wait, who is she? Yeah. Where did she come from? But not at the expense of, you know, of what the A story sh yeah. uh, should, uh, should be. It's so it's like, yeah. Yeah, many, exactly. of the, many of the scenes that they had, and they had lots of many, they had many scenes that they cut away to, could have been entered in last week's episode. Easily. Yes. Especially, okay, so, you, you know, uh, when Din Djarin shows up, uh, sees, uh, you know, uh, gets into trouble and tells Grogu to, to run away, they could have went to Corazon really quick, showed us a little bit of that. And then go back to, uh, and then go back to the story, just so that way you break up some of the monotony. Like I said, the last episode, people complained that it was too repetitive. We, mm -hmm. you know, we had two characters go down the same uh, route, and and breaking that up would have been awesome. And um, and and this would have been the perfect vehicle. And I I think. Once they designed their story, they, um, like I said, they, when they put those story words together, they, they forgot to, uh, you know, they just put things a little bit out of order than they should have really been. Um, I agree. Yeah, because I once, agree. once the director gets their hands on it and starts directing it, I mean, you, you can't have two, um, you know, I guess you could maybe have two directors and do it, but it, it, it just seems like, uh, 
you know, this was their baby, you know, uh, to, to handle it, this story. And it, it would have been better if they had broken things up a little bit. Um, and it starts with storyboarding. Yeah, I think they broke it up the wrong way. And I also saw this happen in season two, where it's just like this episode does not seem to fit like it wasn't cut cut the right way. So I want to say yeah. the episode before in this one, and I agree with you, if they would have intercut that as the B story, that would have made it flow much better. Much and better. And it's just been one episode or yeah. somehow also, between the first one and the third one, just make them two, make them two episodes. And they did this very same thing with uh, Boba Fett as well, where you have all mm -hmm. of a sudden it's like, what happened? Oh, Mando show? I thought we were, we were looking at Boba Fett, which I mean, it, I didn't complain, but it was it was very obvious that it's like, okay, Boba Fett needs saving fast. Let's get Mando and the baby in here quick. Um, and and it was entire episodes of just that. So I I, I don't know what they're doing um, on at Disney, but it's a serious issue that they're having issues like putting together the story to make it flow. Again, though, the ideas in the story I loved, uh, and 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 I I think in smaller doses we we would have not been feeling so heavily um like okay the, we have the the we're, we're cutting back to the you know the andor section uh mm -hmm. and which i didn't mind uh the the andor se section but it is jarring because I, I like you said i came here for amanda and and baby grogu and and baby grogu was hardly in this episode we got hardly any cutesy things maybe no. one little gurgle out of him and that was it <laughs> and i'm like <laughs> where's my where's my grogu <laughs> I know. And it's like they're two, the Mandalorian and Andor are two different genres. Oh, yeah. Andor is more political entry. Mm -hmm. So you is need it? a longer storyline for that. Mandalorian is an action oriented show. And if you're going to drop political entry in there, that's fine. But if it's too much, if you're an action fan like me, you're just like, okay, I'm going to go to sleep now. I'm just, I'm kind of, kind of yeah. like bored to watch, watching it. It's just the two are incompatible mm -hmm. and they didn't find a way to make them compatible. I would, mm -hmm. I would, uh, I would say, like I said, it's like, I didn't, I thought the story was fine. I just felt that too much in the wrong place. And, and I believe they actually showed uh, ratings about this. People are just like, okay, I'm kind of, I'm kind of bored. I don't want to stay in it, you know, now because you're going off in this direction that isn't what I came for. It would be like making Andor all of a sudden super action oriented, yeah, <laughs> and you lose that dramatic storyline. And like, I came here for the intrigue, and you know, yeah. this is what I was here for. And you're not, you know, you're not, uh, you're not giving it to me. So, yeah, I think um, they really need to get a better handle on uh on their storyboarding i'm starting to see what happened in season two kind of happen with season three i'm not passing judgment just yet i'm just saying yeah. it's like i kind of see i kind of see where it's going so i really hope that um they fix this by uh by episode four um i think some fans are willing to forgive this and mm. see what's uh see what's next but um the baby yoda fans are gonna be real pissed really pissed. are you surprised that, that yoda, baby yoda is even in this season because i don't think you know grogu should have been in the season but i agree too i, I he should have stayed with luke it's too yeah. early Man. It was too early. He needed more time to be there. And the acceptance at the end for, you know, like where the armor says you're part of it. We mm -hmm. know that there's going to, it's going to, they, they're going to have a bumpy road anyway. Oh yeah. Um, there. Um, but I unfortunately have to leave the program right now. Yay. It's okay. It's okay, my dear. Of course, we love, 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 love having you here. So please folks do subscribe to her, her contact. Our uh, social media details are in the description box. You subscribe to her. She's an awesome, awesome, awesome channel with Thank great you. stuff. So yeah. please do subscribe. 
to Thank her. You so much for having me, ladies. It's always a pleasure, and I look forward to the next one as well. All yeah. right. Take care, yeah, my dear. Take care. Good to see you. I am looking forward to finding uh, to finding out more about that. But again, like I said, I was not happy that I had to sit through like 35 minutes of and or <laughs> before, fi- before finding that before finding that out. I mean, I honestly believe and we've, we've said it several times that if they would have intercut this as a B plot. Yes. By the time that big reveal, we would have been ready for it because it would have been teased, um, teased for us. But it didn't it didn't happen. And again, they've got they've got a storyboarding problem because with this episode, you wind up alienating the fans who were coming to see the Mandalorian for the Mandalorian. Exactly. Exactly. Um, It's. You know, I think once you start looking at, um, you know, certain directors doing, um, you know, one thing or another, mm-hmm. like it's unsure exactly who is, you know, is supposed to direct, you know, what. But if 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 those storyboards are laid out like they're supposed to, you know, all the setting is there. All the actors know what they're supposed to do. Uh, the technical aspects will blend together nicely. It's it's just making sure that they have uh, they can make this uh, the pacing work. And the pacing at this time uh, just is uh, lopsided. It it just doesn't work along with the fact that the first episode was so heavy laden with all this action of stuff that we have not even explored yet you know and so uh we've we're talking about over 70 percent of the story is like okay we still don't know what's going on with the pirates we still don't know what's going on with ig11 we still don't know what's going on on navarra it's like we 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 needed more of a focus Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, and that is really like lost on here. If you, someone is watching this as a full, uh, like just, um, completely binge watching the whole thing, I think it might work, uh, because you'll have probably more time to uh, enjoy the entire storyline. Eventually Agreed. it's coming in a few minutes, right? But like this, uh, we have to wait a week to find out if it's, if any of this, is going to mm-hmm. be in the next. For all we know, we'll be on Navarro next episode. And I really hope now we really get into the clan, uh, find out more about their practices, their beliefs, and what Bo-Katan is doing. Does she really know that she saw that thing? Is mm-hmm. she holding it? You know, what is what are her intentions? And I hope they start to reveal that uh, information about Bo-Katan, um, having this in, in, in important information um, and not sharing it. Um, and when she decides she's going to share it, like that will be a, that will be a huge moment when she decides she's going to share it. And, um, Mm -hmm. also, uh, Grogu's development in the story. I know, um, like, what is he doing there? Is he just there for, like, is there a story element with Grogu involved at all? Um, Mandalorian, besides now that he's got his, uh, his redemption. What's he going to do? So I, I, I'm, there's still lots of question marks and spinning uh, mm-hmm. plates going around. We need some answers. We need we to do. get some, we need to start getting some answers. We do. Yeah. Yes. And, and I, I certainly hope that episode four will actually give us, um, some of those some of those answers they they've got a lot to make up for so yeah (laughs) hopefully uh hopefully that'll that will uh that will pan out so folks thank you so much for joining us for this uh i guess we call a breakdown and review of episode 
three from season three of The Mandalorian. I want to thank Retro Nerd Girl for joining me as always for this. It's such a, <laughs> such a joy. Love having you here. Oh, Loved having her here for as oh, long absolutely. as she could uh, she could stay with us. So folks, please do hit that like button and we will see you next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs>